Hi everyone, I'm Jay. I'm a first year chemical engineering student studying in Edinburgh, Scotland and today I will show you my top 5 A-level chemistry tips and tricks that will hopefully get you guys that A star A grade that you want. Before I start, I just want to say thank you to Ryan. I also want to apologise because I sound really really bad. There's nothing I can do about that. Like, <laughs> so without any further ado, let's just jump into this video. So my first tip is to make an effective study timeline. It's basically what it says on the tin. So essentially what you want to do is make a timeline week by week essentially leading up to your exams. Now, you want to set yourself goals such as you need to finish, let's say, topic five. You want to finish, let's say, enthalpy. You want to actually make notes on enthalpy. You want to make some revision material on enthalpy. This is not probably the most original tip that I would be able to give you guys, but is nevertheless one of the most important tips. A wise man once said, a goal. Boring. There are several ways that you guys can go around doing this. The first way is to, let's say, use an online calendar. I personally like to use Google Calendar just because it syncs across all my devices without any issue. It even works on most phones, so even if you have a brick, it'll work. Okay, maybe not a brick, but if you guys have an old phone, it'll still work. As long as you have a Google account and an internet connection, you guys should be good to go. With that said, it's also important not to overdo these timelines or revision timetables, whatever you guys want to call them. The reason for this is because all it takes is one day to f*** your entire schedule. I actually set myself four days or five days maximum and then I used to give myself two other days to actually uh, recover let's say for example I was ill then I won't get as much work done right but unless you're like an animal who just like productivity normal people like myself is that you give yourself those two extra days where you say right so I'm not going to plan anything out for this day so if I have work commitments during the week or if I fall ill or anything happens like let's say you want to babysit all the time that you spend being ill all the time that you spend at work where you weren't revising, you guys can use those recovery days to actually revise. And this would be one of the most important tips I give you guys because I know a lot of people who actually plan their days out in like two weeks in advance and this is not the most effective way to do this guys. So another rule I would like to tell you guys about is a rule of eight. Now, this is something that Ibs Mo taught me last year whilst I was doing my A-levels and it helped me quite a lot, which is basically eight hours revision eight hours of let's say sleeping and eight hours of whatever the hell you want to do. Now this can involve working out, traveling, whatever you want. Now my second tip is to get access to the specification. Now a level specification is basically like a GCSE specification. It's a document published by your examining body that highlights the definition, concept, ideas, theories and equations that you need to know for your A-level exam in May slash June. What's even better is once you get hold of the specification, you guys can tailor your notes according to the specification. So what I personally like to do, take the specification and then write my notes under it. I'll put a little video of me showing you guys what my actual A-level chemistry folder looked like. This will help you guys a ton, especially before an exam, when you don't want to be reading lots and lots of unnecessary things which you won't be examined on. Anything that is not in this document would not be examined. Do take it with a pinch of salt, but basically, you might be examined on something that involves an application thing rather than just a knowledge thing. So just be careful when it comes to revision. Sometimes they do like to throw in some application questions, which is uh, which is actually a new trend for the new spec A level chemistry questions. So don't try to take pretty sort of uh, appealing notes in class. You won't actually absorb the full knowledge that your teacher is actually presenting to you. Instead, take bullet point notes when you're in class and then you can go home and improve them into something far better. I personally still like to keep my notes in a bullet point format just because when it comes to revising, it's a lot easier. Let's be honest, nobody actually likes to read tons and tons of paragraphs, right? Also, do not write your notes out for aesthetic reasons. This would be just a waste of time and also be a waste of your revision time. No matter how good your notes look, that's not going to help you guys when you're stressed and you're under pressure. But don't get me wrong, you guys should use as much colours as you want. You guys want to make sure that your notes just pop out to you, but don't waste your time when you're doing it. So instead of rewriting your notes, I would suggest you guys make summary sticky notes. Essentially, summary sticky notes are basically sticky notes which you summarise your entire page onto. Not only will summarising your notes onto a single sticky note help you during your exam time when you actually want to quickly consume information without having to spend too much time. It will also come in handy because you'll be able to make flashcards from these later on when you actually come to make your flashcards. Now, talking about flashcards, you guys should definitely use flashcards. I personally like to use these 
uh, flashcards which are like kind of like palm sized. I mean, depends on how big your hand is, but do not copy the entire page. Out. Instead, copy those sort of summary notes you've made on these sticky notes and copy them onto this. Don't lie to yourself, you've all done this. Now, this is so much better than actually passively highlighting your text or reading. So basically the flow that you should be taking when it comes to making a revision material is to actually make your bullet pointed notes in class, then turning them into something a little bit more detailed at home, then turning them into, let's say, your actual notes, and then turning them into one of your summary sticky notes and then turning them into your flashcards and at the end you guys want to make something known as on a page sheet now it's basically a sheet of a4 paper where you summarize the entire sort of topic on one sheet i do this still uh, i done it for my uh, first university exams in december and it actually works trust me because when it comes to a day or two before exam you don't want to be reading tons and tons of material instead you just want to have a quick glance at your your on a sheet page Past papers are very, very handy. Let me explain. For example, let's say you were to have a boxing match against Floyd Money Mayweather in maybe June or July, right? You don't want to be training with, let's say, Uzi Ahmed. You want to be training with someone who actually will test you the same limit that Floyd Money Mayweather will test you in June. Similarly, what better way to test yourself than to actually use papers that were tested on students previously? Make sure you do all the past papers religiously. Do not skip them, do not do them half-heartedly, do not do half of them and then be like, I'll do them again tomorrow. They are not infinite, by the way. There's only a limited amount of them and you want to be using them really, really effectively. The reason I'm telling you to do all of them religiously is because for the simple reason that a lot of questions nowadays are recycled. And this is because examiners are lazy and they don't want to make new questions. Essentially, they will recycle and sort of reword certain questions. And if you've done a similar question to that, the chances are that the mark scheme will be similar to the one that you've done previously, which means you guys have a free pass to the exam, right? You guys can basically walk into the exam. If you see a recycled question, you can be like, yeah, I know how to do this. I've done this question before, I got it right, which means that if I use similar words and phrases like I did in my actual past paper, I can get the full marks. Also make an Excel spreadsheet to keep track of all the past papers that you've done. You also wanna have a column, especially relating to questions that you've got wrong. And the reason for this is because when it comes to your exams, like a, a day or two before exams, you wanna go through these questions that you've got wrong previously. And the reason for this is like I said, again, questions are recycled. You don't want a question to come up that you have got wrong. So moving on, you wanna use and abuse your teachers and friends, right? So get your savage friends and your savage teachers to mark your past papers. The reason you wanna do this is because you don't wanna be marking your past papers yourself first. And the reason for this is because a lot of people are lenient on themselves. So they'll be saying things like, I won't get this wrong in the real exam. Everybody makes stupid mistakes and essentially the whole point of doing past papers and getting your friends and your teachers to mark them is so you actually iron out those stupid mistakes that you sometimes make. That's the whole point of doing this past papers before an exam is to make sure you don't make those silly errors that can actually potentially lose you guys a top grade. Also return the favor and ask your friends if you guys can mark their past papers. Now the reason you wanna do this is because you wanna expose yourself to the mark scheme. The mark scheme is really, really important. It tells you exactly what to write for a perfect banging 10 out of 10 answer, right? So when it comes to mark schemes, you guys wanna look out for keywords. These are words which are highlighted in your mark scheme as bold. Now, without these words, you guys won't get the mark. So if you don't have these words in your answer, there is no way in hell the examiner is gonna give you the mark. Also, when it comes to doing your past papers, give yourself plenty of time to do them. Do not do them all in like, let's say a day. You essentially wanna give yourself at least two or three days between each past paper. So the reason you want to do this is because you don't want to go into another past paper without revising. You want to give yourself enough time that you identify the mistakes that you've made in the first past paper and sort of try to iron those out before you move on to the next past paper. Whilst it's important to do all the past papers, it's important that you don't rinse the past papers. These past papers are in limited numbers and you want to use them very, very carefully. If you do somehow manage to rinse your exam papers, try to do uh, exam papers from other examining bodies like let's say at Excel for example if you guys do OCR or vice versa. Personally recommend using a CGP revision guide for your A-level chemistry course. So this is my A-level chemistry textbook. As you can see, it's been used and abused because I literally carried it everywhere. I use this more than the actual textbook that my school recommended. To summarize what the textbook is saying in let's say five pages into something like two pages. So you, you definitely want to get hold of this. If you don't have this, what are you doing? You guys have been taking L's. If you like someone like me who likes to follow the specification, this book is really, really important. It keeps everything simple and nice. So you guys can definitely condense your notes even more. Another resource which I would highly recommend is using 
chemguide.co.uk is basically a website made by a teacher which actually has all the notes and all the sort of experimental notes that you need for your new spec A level chemistry course. Notice how I said the experimental notes. Experiments are really important now and they do get tested in the new spec A level chemistry course and it's important that you know them off by heart especially the ones that are in the specification. The main reason for this is because the course is becoming a lot and lot more practical. Do not sort of blow off your teacher's practicals. They do make quite a lot of your marks and you don't want to be losing those easy marks. So another great resource I would recommend is My Chem Guy on YouTube. My Chem Guy on YouTube is basically this great amazing teacher who makes online lectures and experimental videos on his YouTube channel. He uploads a lot of lectures relating to OCR A-level chemistry. He has tons of good lectures, he has a lot of walkthrough material, he walks through a lot of old spec past papers and he sort of tells you guys how to write certain answers. So another tip is to avoid uni level books when it comes to making your revision notes and materials. Right, so this is the chemistry book that I have for my chemical engineering course this year. This is something which my teacher recommended to me and you do not need this, right? Believe me, a lot of things that you learn at A-level are kind of like half truth or the half lies. So even if you do mention a lot of points mentioned in this book in your A-level paper, you won't get the marks. The reason for this is because those points are not on the mark scheme. When it comes to revision, try to avoid using other resources like a university level textbook, for example. Right, so when it comes to bonus tips, try to stay healthy and eat healthy because you want to be physically and mentally fit so you guys can walk to the exam and smash it and not feel like you need to take a poo because you had a dodgy takeaway the night before. Also try to get sufficient sleep during your revision sessions because sleep actually helps retain information and if you guys are not sleeping enough then you guys won't be retaining information and essentially you'll be wasting your time revising. Anyways guys, it brings us to the end of the video. If you guys have enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to Raihan's channel. Also click that bell notification button. If you guys have any video suggestions for me or Raihan, please leave them in the comment section below as well. If you guys want to see more of me, you guys can go ahead and click the link in the description which will take you to my channel. I upload a lot of day in the life kind of videos. So if you guys are into that kind of stuff, then go ahead and subscribe. I'm really active on Snapchat and Instagram. So if you guys have any questions, you guys can definitely send it there. Uh, and I'll try my best to reply to most of you guys. Anyways guys, I hope you guys stay productive and revise well over this break. And I'll see you guys next time.